Hello and welcome to another episode of Lord Splodge Short. In this episode we're going to give you a quick guide on how to get your Raspberry Pi. Um, that's the $25 Linux box powered by a ARM chip. If you've been living in a cave and not heard about it for some reason. Uh, so this guide will gonna go from downloading the SD card image, installing it on your Mac, booting it on the Raspberry Pi, and then doing the initial setup. To begin with, you'll need a four gig or higher SD card, and then go to the Raspberry Pi website, click on downloads, and you want to download the current version of Raspberry and Wheezy. Um, there's a download here. Um, once you've got that on your computer, if you scroll up, there's a guide for beginners on how to set up the SD card. And we'll scroll down past the Windows bit. And you'll get here where you can download the Raspberry Pi SD card builder. So what we'll do is we'll pop off and download that. Okay, so we've downloaded it and dragged it to our applications folder and double click to launch it. And it's gonna go, where's your image file? Well, in this case, it's in my download folder at the top here. And we'll choose that. And now we need to put the SD card in the Mac. As we can see, it's connected. Um, so we'll click continue. As you can tell here, I've got two choices of SD cards and that's because I forgot to disconnect my time machine drive is just attached by USB. So what we'll do is we'll quit the Raspberry Pi builder. Now that I've quit uh, the Raspberry Pi builder, I'm going to eject the time machine volume. And go back, rerun SD card builder. Now I get the one choice, and as we can see, that's the one we want. So we'll click OK. You have to have admin. After you type your admin password, it'll unmount the SD card. As you can see over here, it's now unmounted. Don't remove it from the computer as it tells you to do. And then click Continue. Now, it'll now write the image to that SD card. Um, it'll take quite a while, depending on the speed of your computer and the SD card. Uh, you can see a little progress bar at the top here. So what we'll do is we'll come back. When so as you can see, it's finished. It wants me to remove the SD card and connect it to my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm just gonna show you something first though before we do that. So I'm going to eject the card and put it back in the Mac. On the root of the SD card on your Mac, you can see a few files. One of them here is the config.txt. Now what I did is I copied the config text off my old setup. And the reason for that is that in here, you can see a lot of options. But with my TV, I have to put it in 720p mode uh, and that's done by uncommenting this line and put it in HDMI underscore mode four. If you look at the Raspberry Pi website, there's a document that shows you what some of these options are. For example, here you can overclock the um, arm. In this case, it's actually at 900 megahertz. Um, I don't recommend doing that out of the box if it's your first time with your Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's that. I will eject that and we'll put it in the Raspberry Pi. So here's the Raspberry Pi and as you can see it's now booting. 
So lots of text will scroll screen. Now the first time it boots, it boots into Raspberry Config. Um, as you can see here, use your arrow keys to go up and down and enter to select. The first thing we're going to do is configure the time zone. As it's set to ETC, we're going to set it to uh, GMT. Obviously you'll set it to whatever time zone you're in. Again, enter and up arrow to Europe for us and then down to London and press OK. Off it goes. Sets the time zone. Um, what we're going to do next is a change the memory. Um, you can have 16364. This is what the GPU has. If you're going to use it as a media center, set it to higher. In this case, we're not. And now we're going to set the password. Uh, when you press enter, prompt it for a new password. I'm going to type it in the bottom there as you can see I'll type it again and it's just because by default the password is raspberry and not very secure especially if you're not going to connect it to the internet and that's it finish and then reboot now when I was doing this one thing I forgot to do was enable the SSH so what we're going to do is let it reboot and then enable that SSH so we can get onto the Raspberry Pi from a, another computer because we don't want to do all this uh, crunched over the keyboard in front of the Raspberry Pi. Right, so the Raspberry Pi is rebooted. We've gone back into Raspberry Config and we're going to go to SSH and press enter on that. That'll enable the SSH server, so we're going to go, yep and job's done we can now continue the setup from the mac using ssh we just need to do one more thing and that's find out the ip address to find out the ip address uh, from the flashing command prompt we type if config or one word so that's if c-o-n-f-i-g uh, that gives a list of text and what we're looking for on the ETH there at the top there is the IP address which in that case was 192.168.1.103 um, so we'll use that in the next bit where we SSH onto the Raspberry Pi to finish configuring it. Now we have the Raspberry Pi configured because um, we've enabled SSH we can do the rest of the config via the Mac rather than keeping a keyboard connected to it. So we'll launch terminal. And we'll type the following command, SSH, and then the username that you want to connect with. So in this case, it's the default Pi and the IP address, which was 103. And it's gonna go, I don't know who this is. Never connected before, so we'll go yes. And it adds it to the list of known hosts on the Mac. I put the password in. We'll actually type the password correctly. So we are we're on the Mac. We're on the Raspberry Pi now, so we can type commands as we think. The only thing we need to do is we're going to use sudo and we are going to edit slash etc slash network slash interfaces networks always give it slash network slash inter now what we need to do is give it a fixed IP address so to do that we're going to run nano now sudo bit runs it as root because by default we won't have permission to edit this file and here we go and you can see at the bottom there's a list of commands so what we're going to do first of all 
is we are going to get rid of the DHCP and type static and address let's get 192.168.1.99 and then net mask for the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and then the network address which is 192.168.1.1.0 sorry and then the broadcast which is 192.168.1.255 and finally the gateway which is 192.168.1.255 dot one right so we have interface if not which is the ethernet one and uh, that's set static we get the address these will differ on your network this is for my network the net mask the network the broadcast and the gateway so what we'll do is we'll press control x not control o sorry and that's it yep that's the one and control x exit and um, now what we need to do is tell the Raspberry Pi to reboot to get the new IP address so that's sudo reboot so now we've got the Raspberry Pi set up on its new IP address we'll issue the ssh command again this time ssh pi at the new IP address and enter the password and actually still can't type the password right okay here we go now we're going to issue a couple of commands to get it up to date so sudo apt hyphen get update that's going to go off and get a list of all the current packages that are installed as well as the new sources for them and take a few moments and that's done we've now got a list of up-to-date mirrors for the packages so now to press up arrow and we shall upgrade and that will install any new packages um, that it's found so off it goes and it's going to go this will require in this case 1488 kilobytes of additional disk space yeah. yep and off it goes and again that'll take some time but once you've done that, your Raspberry Pi is ready to use. I've optimized mine towards being a server. Obviously, if you wanted it to do something like Xbox Media Center or be an AirPlay mirror target, you'd need to install, well, Xbox Media Center for starters. But secondly, you'd want to focus more of your memory towards the GPU. In this case, I'm not too bothered about that. Um that concludes this episode um i hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more episodes soon thanks for watching